In this lesson, we're going to begin to talk about vertical, the vertical motion equation. So the vertical motion equation is uh, a quadratic that involves gravity, and involves an initial velocity, and it involves an initial height, and it basically is going to calculate where an object is after a specific time, or how long it takes to hit the ground, or what's the maximum height that an object will get. Those are the types of things that we can use this for. So this is our vertical motion equation. And please understand that it is a vertical motion. So it's literally something going straight up and coming back straight down. All right, it's not a path of a football being thrown. It's throwing an object straight up and down and seeing where it at, is at after a specific amount of time or how long it takes to hit the ground or a couple of other questions. So the pieces here, this h of t, the h of t represents a very specific height at a specific time. So they may ask, where is the object after three seconds? Or how long does it take for an object to hit five seconds or to hit five feet or 10 feet or 100 feet or whatever the situation is? Your t in the equation is always time. This v with a little subscript of zero is your initial velocity. And the h with the subscript of zero is your initial height. So let's see how this is used. So we have an equation, an example, and it is a golf ball is hit straight up into the air. And again, that's the key. It's hit vertical. It's not hit and it, it goes onto the green or anything. It just hit straight up into the air with an initial velocity of 168 feet per second. How long until the ball hits the ground? So first thing is let's write our initial equation, see what we know out of it and plug it in and let's see if we can figure out what the answer is to this. So our equation is negative 16 t squared plus an initial velocity times time plus an initial height. So what do we know? We know that we have a initial velocity right here of 168 feet per second. All right, so we're going to be able to substitute a value in for this. The initial height, we are hitting a golf ball. So we're gonna assume because there's not saying anything, there's no discussion about whether we're below or above, or really we're hitting it from the ground. It's gonna go straight up, come back straight down. So our initial height is gonna equal zero. All right, so let's plug in what we know. The negative 16 is gravity and it's gonna be a constant. So let's see where this takes us. So we have height, with respect to time is going to be negative 16 t squared plus an initial velocity of 168 times t. And then we don't have an initial height, so we can leave the equation. And the ball does go up. And because it goes up, we have a positive velocity. If we are throwing something down, then we would have a negative initial velocity. So it depends on the direction. Um, so the question is, how long does it take for the ball to hit the ground? So that's the specific height we're talking about. And we're gonna be solving for t because we don't know how long it takes. So specifically, we have a height of zero if we're trying to hit the ground. So we will substitute this height with respect to time with a zero. And so we'll have a negative 16 t squared plus 168 t. And let's go ahead and solve. So. How do we solve this equation? We're gonna try and factor because it's equal to zero and we're gonna use the zero product property. So what do they have in common? They are both divisible. We can take out a T and we can also take a 16 out of this. So, and I'm gonna take a negative 16 T out just so I can have a positive variable on the inside of the parentheses. So that's gonna turn into a T minus eight and that equals zero. So now we're gonna take each of our factors, set it equal to zero. T minus eight equals zero. And we're gonna solve each piece individually. So divide by negative 16, divide by negative 16. And that is gonna get us a T equal to zero. And here we're gonna add eight to both sides and that'll get us a t equals 
8. So we have two answers to this. So we got to figure out if both are valid or if one doesn't make sense or if either of them makes sense. It does say how long until the ball hits the ground. Well, this time represents when the ball is on the ground. The ball is on the ground when we initially hit it at time zero. But that's not how long until the ball hits the ground. So in this particular case, the answer makes sense, but it doesn't make sense to answer what it is that they're asking for. When does it hit the ground? It will take eight seconds. So eight seconds until the ball hits the ground. All right. And that is a beginning problem for vertical motion equation.